and also with you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter. It is good to gather together, even in this way, as the people of God. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Jesus Christ is the living word. Through the word, we are redeemed. Jesus Christ is the living water. At the font, we are raised with Christ to new life. Jesus Christ is the great table host. At the table, saints and sinners gather to receive and proclaim redemption. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our gathering name is Christ has risen. mercy and peace be yours in abundance from the one who is, who was, and who ever shall be. Let us pray. God, we gather as people on a journey this morning. We believe and we have our doubts. We do good and we sin. We are imperfect humans and yet you still love us. Love and grace, hope and faith, these are the essence of you whom we call God. We seek forgiveness and grace from you and from those we've harmed. Assured of that grace, we are ready to grow again. And we yearn for a new way, a new perspective, and a clear path. Though we are full of trust and full of doubt, we are here this morning. Speak to us, God. Continue creating us. Inspire our hearts, enlighten our minds, and guide our actions. Amen. And friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with, with you. you. Let us pray once more for God's illumination. Guiding God, send your Holy Spirit upon the reading of your word, that it might serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. 
Amen. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 2. I was about to say, follow along in your pew Bible, and then I looked up and realized that it was an iPad. So, here we are for, hear these words from God to us this morning. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth. A man, of God, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside of the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I'm, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus... God raised up from the dead, and, and of that, all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he, he that is Thomas, said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 9. Listen for the word of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. It's our sixth Sunday of worshiping online. Many of us are beginning our sixth week of Stay Home, Stay Safe, where we have severely limited interactions with anyone outside our household and going anywhere except when absolutely necessary. Living where we do, even with the news, it's easy to concoct stories that this virus, this global pandemic, isn't real. What surge, we ask? What death? Rather than relief at this protection, this flattened curve kind of news for our particular community, we instead feel aggravated, annoyed, and inconvenienced. We lash out looking for someone or something to blame. We want our normal to resume. Whether that's school or work or hanging out with our friends or eating out at a restaurant or watching sports. We don't want more news of more change, more cancellation, more adjusting of plans, more waiting. Some of us waited eagerly for April 13, believing some magic switch would flip that day. Now some of us wait for April 30, still holding on to something we might think is hope. Depending on the news you read or watch, there are endless metrics, offering models with weeks or months or, let's not even say it out loud. In one rather sobering article this week, a public health expert was quoted saying, everyone wants to know when this will end. That's not the right question. The right question is, how do we continue? This question stopped me in my tracks because, oh, people of God, this is the question for the church. A question that the church should be answering with gusto. This is a question that demands our attention, our willingness to delve deep into faith heritage from scripture to many of our own family trees. This is a question that the people of God have been living, have been living for generations. 
particularly on this side of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the second Sunday of Easter. We are in a season of resurrection hope. No, this is not the Easter season we've become accustomed to with big and boisterous alleluias. And yet somehow each day feels more and more true that this is the Easter season inviting us anew into the very first Easter. The one where Jesus' friends and family are deeply grieving. The one where the followers of this would-be Messiah are terrified. Terrified of being found out, called out, hauled out. The one where even when even when the good news is spoken aloud, even when Jesus himself is seen in the flesh, that it hardly seems believable or real. How do we continue? Surely this is what Jesus' disciples were wondering in the face of their grief and their fear. While Jesus' resurrection appearance might have brought a measure of hope and relief to these beloved disciples, it also had to bring more wondering. I mean, now what? Who would believe this? What violence might this incite in an already tense city? How do we continue? In this last week, I heard or read about Vice Admiral James Stockdale three different times. His is a story worth paying attention to, particularly in this season marked by Restless impermanence, another great line from that sobering article. So if you haven't heard of Stockdale, he was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for seven years. And his reflections on his experience are profound. He talks about the imprisoned who marked their time by this moving target of surely we'll be out by whose disappointment again and again was not sustainable or ultimately survivable. Stockdale employed a different strategy, a combination of hope and realism. He did not avoid the brutal facts of the horrific situation that he was in. And he also clung with faith that he would survive. How do we continue? We are resurrection people. Even gathered virtually, we can realize that ours is a story that tells the truth about reality and clings to faith in the power of the resurrection. Even with the grief and the fear that surrounded Christ's followers, the resurrection news trickled out. It rippled out. The story had a life of its own, drawing more people in to deeper transformation and connection and sending people out to continue to proclaim grace, peace, abundant hope. Letters like today's text from 1 Peter are further testimony to the power of the resurrection. This good news has a way of seeping into the brutal facts of reality, even suffering, and to still be good news. The good news of the gospel has continued to be good news through seasons of horrific persecution, devastating wars, economic turmoil, raging injustice, unthinkable diagnoses, and countless isms undermining the flourishing of God's image bearers. Phrases like new birth and living hope are an invitation to hold fast, to cling to this profound story of hope that does give us strength to put one foot in front of the other. This isn't good news we've somehow worked for. It's the very gift of grace. The good news isn't that there won't be suffering, but that God knows, God understands our suffering and meets us in our suffering, in our fear. Yes, even in our doubt. We are living in strange times. None of us have done this before, lived quite like this before. Yes, some have experienced unbearable tragedies. Yes, some have experienced unimaginable hurt and pain. And still none of us have yet lived through a global pandemic. And it is okay. 
It is okay for us to name the reality around us, the parts that are weird, horrible, and hard, and maybe even the parts that perhaps feel better than something we knew before. And we can also long for verse 8 to be our own hope. Although you have not seen the resurrected Christ, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. How do we continue? We don't let the restless impermanence of these days lull us into thinking we just need to hold out hope for some magic date when we get our normal back. We tell the truth. We tell the truth about what's happening naming the unbearable toll that this disease is having on low-income workers who don't have the privilege to stay home, on our black brothers and sisters whose health has been compromised for years due to structural racism, for our elderly whose latter years have already been marked by intense loneliness and isolation. We tell the, the truth about our own deep grief that deep grief that lives inside of us and makes us lash out or check out. And in the midst of these brutal facts, we also claim resurrection hope. For by God's great mercy, we are the recipients of new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are the recipients of new birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for us, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed. I was reminded of a song we've sung here at Second and want to offer these words as our prayer to hold fast and to be held fast in this Easter season.
sometimes in the process of preparing a sermon, the song of response that you plan earlier in the week changes as the sermon um, is created, writ written, uh, prepared. And so that was our, also our song of response. So would you please join me now in prayer? Holy One, on this Eastertide morning, we come to you. We come with our joys and our concerns, our hopes and our struggles. We give you thanks for the signs of spring, <clears throat> the sounds of birds chirping, the first flowers of the season, grass that is greening, the knowledge that even the frosty mornings are not for long. We also give you thanks for the odd blessing of this time, that the air and waters are cleaner, that creation is experiencing a Sabbath it has not for generations, that we remember this when things change back to some semblance of normal. We give you thanks for the continued work of first responders and healthcare workers for daycare providers and grocery store clerks, for the cleaning crews and delivery workers, for anyone who puts their health at risk to care and provide for others. And God, while we have things to be grateful for, we still come with heavy hearts and concerns for our world. Lord, we continue to lift up all that is going on with the pandemic. We pray for our healthcare workers. We pray for researchers. Lord, may a vaccine be on the horizon. We pray for those grieving and unable to, more, to gather to mourn. We pray for those trapped in homes that are not loving or safe. We pray for those struggling to make ends meet and to feed their families. For those battling mental illness. For those who have lost hope. God, we pray that you might continue to grow our capacity for empathy and compassion. May we continue to seek out the lost and the outcasts. May we not sacrifice the vulnerable on the altar of commerce. May we continue to recognize our common human bonds across national boundaries. May we use the words we and us more than I or me or mine. May we find ways, though socially distant, to reach out across boundaries. God, we pray for the... For the with those sighs that are too deep for words, those things that we can barely name for ourselves, our secret shames and fears, continue to move in us and heal us. God, we pray for all of this and more using the words that your Son taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the table we remember our good shepherd, who laid down his life for us sheep. So we go into the world to share what we can with others. From the font, we know that we have been raised with Christ and made a new people. So, so we, we proclaim, proclaim resurrection and hope. Rooted in the word, we see that Christ has burst forth from the tomb. So, so we, we demonstrate this new life in acts of love and healing. Transformed by the light no darkness can overcome. We, we rejoice and carry peace forward. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.